Hello soul searchers and welcome or welcome back to my channel Follow Loose Fortune where we use tarot to gain better insight into ourselves and the world around us. So as you can see we are in our second installment of our art collective. I told you guys in the last art collective that I would walk you through how I create a storyboard. So that is what we are going to be doing today. Um, the colors that came out were green, mauve, purple, and auburn. And I love how the colors are like a bit more specific, like it's not just red or, I mean purple did come out, but you also have mauve, which is like a lilac purple. So that's what we're going to be doing today, <laughs> is just walking you guys through the storyboard. But I do want to emphasize first that the storyboard is not the piece that gets hung in a museum, okay? This is just the piece that we use to get inspiration, to flesh out ideas. This is what we do to find the piece that gets hung in the museum, okay? I just wanna make that clear from the jump because it's not a pretty process necessarily. Um, it can be kind of messy and look a little unorganized because we don't fully know where we're going with it, but this process has worked for me, so I just wanted to share it with you guys. And yeah, without any further ado, let's just go ahead and get into it. If you're new here, basically this is a monthly spin-off of the monthly predictions and prescriptions video. And I use the energy of the reading and the colors that come out specifically to kind of guide my artwork for the coming month. First I get a canvas. I don't even know what size this is. This comes in like a seven pack at Michael's for nine dollars. Um, I need a pen. Here we go. So first thing I like to do is kind of write down some of the keywords that are coming up for me from the reading. Um, so one thing, especially things that are more um, artistically related. So form, not detail, specifically for the faceless people. Um, profile also came up. Doors, energy portals, messages about questions, like the question you are the answer to. Obviously, you can watch the video on your own and do this. You don't have to use the same words or phrases that I'm using. I'm going to split the canvas into four sections, and I don't know why, but I just really like doing this with yarn instead of just drawing a line. Um, I really like making my sections with yarn. So, I'm going to measure... And cut. I think I really enjoy doing it this way because it's not so quick, like as quick as it is with a pen to do this. Um, it's not as quick, so it forces me to like slow down and really find a flow because I have a tendency to move to just like rush through stuff and some of the fun of art, at least for me, is just in the journey of it. Last time I did this, I glued the yarn to the canvas using this um, glitter glue. I don't know why, I just really wanted to use this glue. But <laughs> this time I'm just going to use tape. Number one, this is going to be quicker. Thought of it just being quicker though, I think tape will offer um, some texture that could be interesting. that the glue was not able to add. So now we have our four sections on the canvas. You're kind of not seeing all of them, but they're there. All right, so I put you guys at a higher angle so you can see exactly what I'm doing. But basically I'm gonna mix this color first. The first color was green, but as you can see that is a little too fluorescent, so <clears throat> I have two different greens to make my life a little easier here. And I'm basically just painting one of these sections. I'm not necessarily trying to cover everything. 
Maybe it gets covered, maybe it doesn't. I like to play with the opacity as well, so I'll like add water to the brush. I obviously got way too much paint. I don't know what I was thinking, honestly. So once all four sections are filled in, I'm just going to have to let it dry. Um, the next step is to basically go through and highlight and shade the different areas according to kind of what's already there in a sense, but it doesn't work as well in my opinion. When I um, try to blend, like if it's still wet and it's blending together, it just, no. Um, so yeah, I will let this dry and I'll come back probably tomorrow to show you guys the rest of this. Alrighty guys, so it is the next morning. Um, everything is dry here. So I'm going to probably start with this green just because it's like the easiest based off of my setup <laughs> right now. Um, so I am doing fluorescent green again. And this time I'm not going to mix these two at least not just yet. That's my prerogative though. You don't have to do it exactly like I'm doing it. And I am going to add some white. So for this, this is the part where we're highlighting and shading everything. So I'm actually going to get a smaller brush. This one is going to be too big. And yeah, I'm just going to go in and highlight and shade the parts that really call out to me. So like I'm seeing how this right here is lighter. So I'm just gonna kind of follow color in the lines, if you will. There is no right or wrong. Like there are some lighter parts that I'm probably just gonna leave as a light green instead of a white. But I just really allow myself to be guided through this process. I don't overthink it too much, so. Yeah, just flow with me while I fill one in. So I didn't say it originally, but what we're trying to do is create contrast. 
because that's where art really begins to happen. That's how things take form is in the contrast. So hence that's the reason why we're going really light in some areas, going really dark in others. And trying to keep this more muted green kind of to a minimum, we really want to see the dramatics. So as I'm working, I'm noticing like different things that I'm doing that I didn't, I don't know, I've just never really paid much attention to it because I wasn't trying to teach anybody. Um, so I said that I like follow kind of what's happening up here as far as choosing what to shade, what not to shade. But there are some times where I take liberties, like with this section right here, it wasn't this bright. Um, Technically, probably didn't need to be highlighted, but I wanted to highlight it, so. I guess the thing is to just, like, kind of make rules for yourself. But then don't be scared to break those. Um, because that's kind of how art happens, right? That's why it's important to know the rules. Not so that we can follow them, but so that we can decide which ones actually work for us. And discard the ones that don't. So I have just completed the green side. This is really hard to show. But once I complete a section, I basically like to just sit with it and look to see kind of like what's jumping out at me as far as like an image or a motif. And if nothing shows up, then I just kind of keep doing this, like keep re-highlighting and um, repainting, reshading until something does jump out at me. Um, but another thing too that I like to do is kind of turn it in different directions. One thing that I'm kind of seeing here with this tape, like that kind of looks like a decayed building to me. I don't know if you guys can really see the, I don't know. I just kind of see like columns and then a roof, but maybe it's like snowed in or I don't know. I'm going to have to come back to that. <laughs> um, and then I like to turn it this way because sometimes you see different things when it's this way. Really seeing anything here, but I'm looking at it through the camera. I'm not like normally I look at it just straight on, but 
because of my setup here, it's kind of hard to do that. So, all right, I'm just going to flip it. I'm not really seeing anything jump out at me that way. All right, and then see in this angle, it's hard to see everything. I'm going to turn it the, I'll turn it all four directions. Like, I feel like the directions are important, just as important as the paint itself. And I tend to see buildings a lot. Like I'm seeing, um, it kind of looks like an old, like Neolithic sort of structure here. Like an entrance to a temple or something. Kind of seeing that there. And then if that's a Neolithic structure, you could say that this is like a light being or an alien or something that's just like super tall over it. Yeah, this is giving me, this is giving me something to work with right here. And that's the thing about this technique is like you do all of this shading and painting and sometimes the image that comes out, you know, some, there are times like the first time I did this, I feel like I was just seeing things all over the place and now I'm only getting a couple things. So I might like come back and like I said, reshade, recolor it. But that's basically how this technique works. I use this technique to get inspiration, like what's popping out at me. And the biggest thing about this part is just creating contrast because you can see the red over here, it already has contrast when you first lay down the paint and then when you start making it more dramatic and really pulling it out of there, different things can jump out at you that can really create an amazing painting. If you head over to my um, Instagram, I use this technique to cr to create the um, Sea of Questions painting that's over there. So yeah, that's basically the technique. I am super excited to see what we do for January 2024. Feel free to tag me on Instagram or TikTok. I do need to link my TikTok in the description box. So I'll try to remember to do that. But um, feel free to tag me in your artwork. I'd love to see what you're creating. And I know this focuses a lot on visual arts, but I really appreciate artists of all mediums. So if you're a musician and you find that this sort of thing kind of works for you too, feel free to tag me. I'm always looking for new artists and I am super excited to go into 2024 with all of this beautiful inspiration, energy, and art. Thank you guys for tuning in and I will be seeing you all in the next video.